Well, we don't have an episode for today. So instead, I have compiled some of our best stories from our first five episodes. Stories and show and tells and whatever. So I hope you enjoy it. I will make sure there's some sound in between each separate story so you don't get confused. Because I'm I'm confused. Very confused. All right. Thanks, guys. So this one, uh, plummeting sperm counts, shrinking penises, toxic chemicals threaten humanity. Well, yes. I was now I have it. an excuse. <laughs> Giant threat. It was the chemicals, honey. I swear. Yeah. I grew up next to a <laughs> nuclear power plant that also dumped into the water. Okay. So uh, this is from Aaron Brockovich at The Guardian, and it's an opinion piece, but it says, The end of humankind, it may be coming. <laughs> <laughs> they spell. They, they spelled it right. Uh, so I would have put a U. But <laughs> that's why I'm not a reporter. <laughs> that's literally the reason you <laughs> went here to get a job with your journalist <laughs> or your you with journalism your schooling and training. You have a particularly odd typo, <laughs> Mister <laughs> Jason. But you repeated it sixteen times <laughs> in this one report. You and went it, into your word document control find <laughs> replace <laughs> and then i giggle like every time i'm writing it so uh this says thanks to hormone disrupting chemicals that are decimating fertility at an alarming rate around the globe uh, in a new book called countdown by shauna swan and environmental blah 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 yeah, nobody cares about the credentials it's, yeah pff, what it says sperm counts have dropped almost 60 percent since 1973 um i'm looking for the shrinking wing part hold on uh <laughs> Who's going around to everybody's bedrooms, collecting tape measure or something, <laughs> counting each oh, up two, ah. in, two inches? It was two point four inches last year. You know? <laughs> Thanks, mom. You're so helpful. Mom, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I told you I'm sleeping. Okay. Yeah. I have questions. <laughs> no, you don't. Because <laughs> we'll my, give you answers. No, I don't want the answers. I'm not at my best when I'm sleeping. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> why did I wake up? <laughs> You at least have a good 2.8 by then. Oh. <laughs> it's normal for a mother to measure their grown up son's penis. That's all I want to well, say. Well, they don't measure our height anymore because we right. aren't grown in 25 right. we years. We don't go up, we grow out. I don't know what it is. <laughs> My mom lives with me, you guys. This is really weird. <laughs> I don't think I can. Well, if it, uh, if it makes you uncomfortable, just tell her to stop. <laughs> All right, so as if that wasn't terrifying enough, Swan's research finds that these chemicals aren't just dramatically reducing semen quality, they are also what? shrinking penis size and volume of the testes. <laughs> this is nothing short of a full-scale emergency for humanity. Viagra to the rescue! <laughs> oh, oh, Anything not, to do with penises is hilarious. It really is. That's pretty much... Everybody who's made it this far into the podcast needs to realize that Something like this will come up every, hey. every every episode. So I've got a news article to talk about with you guys. I also have one. Oh, sweet! So we'll we'll compete, and whoever made the best man win. I'll start off. Uh, these are you didn't even throw the gauntlet at my feet, but cool. Go ahead. Six freaky facts about Nikola Tesla. All right. Ooh. Zach's like, I have the same article. <laughs> oh, mine has nudity. This is from the Huffington Post. It's it's actually old. It's uh, December 2017. But, uh, oh. wait, yours has nudity? No. Oh, mind. sad. It's um, Nikola Tesla nude. Anyway, I'm listening. So, um, a couple weird things about Tesla. And if you don't know who Tesla is, just do a Wikipedia search. Uh, he It's a car that we will never have. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the actual um, inventor, if you can call him that... Um, was the he's most not, famous for the Tesla coil, that big coil that shoots electricity out. Um, but he was a really smart guy, but he was also kind of crazy. Um, so like you. Well, I'm not that smart. I'm just crazy. Fair. Um, anyway, the car is, of course, you know named after him. But uh, if you also watch The Prestige, uh, David Bowie plays him. And in that fictional account, you know, he created the clones for Hugh Jackman. Spoiler alert. Um, it's okay to do a spoiler alert for like a 12 year old <laughs> if they haven't seen it by now that's kind of but on you them. know there's going to be somebody that's yeah. pissed if they ever hear this online he's trolls, like oh dude online trolls he's going to watch mean. that tomorrow online trolls make me cry sometimes 
I had a book review of someone who said that they just couldn't get into it, so they gave me one star. It's like, did you even read the whole freaking book? <laughs> anyway, so number one, Tesla had a thing about the number three. So Like uh, going number one, going number two, and then going number three? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> this is like OCD stuff. He had to wash his hands three times in a row, walking around a building three times before going in. Um, probably nowadays we diagnose him with obsessive compulsive disorder, which is kind of sad. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's number two. He detested pearls. Why? He couldn't stand the sight of them. In fact, he hated pearls so much that he refused to speak to women who wore them. <laughs> <laughs> you, you bitch, you troll. <laughs> uh, oh, no, he wouldn't even say that. because He wouldn't pearls. talk to them. Yeah. yeah. So he was also celibate. He believed that married life was not for him. Um, I'm sure, it was really right. his yeah, choice. I, think, I mean, like, <laughs> with some of these eccentricities, however you say it, it might not have been his choice that he was. Yeah, he was a he was an incel back in the day. Yep. Like he was a <laughs> neckbeard, <laughs> nice guy. Yeah, the first incel. I've yep. ever like he goes to see a hooker and they're wearing pearls. He's like, <laughs> done. <"Dun." laughs> he was uh, reported to have once said, "I do not think you can name many great inventions that have been made by married men." <laughs> okay, I'll, well, I'll give him that. That's one. yeah. Okay, so number four, uh, he lived in a hotel room. Uh, he lived on room 3327 of a, in a two-room suite on the 33rd floor of the Hotel New Yorker. So Wow. You know, that must not have been where his lab was then. He must have had a separate uh, maybe place that, for his lab. Maybe. Uh, maybe it was in the basement of the hotel, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting serious, like, serial killer vibes from this dude. <laughs> you would know. <laughs> I'm, not mean, a, I'm not a great inventor. Um, no, but you're a serial killer. <laughs> that's that's why we're not saying your last name. You know what? I would be if I wasn't so damn lazy. It's like... <sighs> Inventing uh, takes effort. No, I mean serial that's killer. Not, that's, that's not, not a murder. murder. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I really want to go out and kill a hooker, but... Uh, I'm just... Uh, Star Trek is on. Star Trek is on. <laughs> and anyway. I'd have to get up. So number five, he was unusually fond of pigeons. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's celibate. Um, or just was he's he? with humans. So he was, there was a particular pigeon he took in and nursed back to health. And he was reported. Like, like on his chest? <laughs> well, here's the best part. It's like suckling him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he have was, they interviewed the pigeon to find out? Anyway, keep going. The, the special victims unit probably did. <laughs> but he was reported to have said that he loved the pigeon the way a man loves a woman. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> the uh, celibacy part has been explained thoroughly. At this right. Point. Well, maybe he wasn't celibate, with, you know, but uh, he believed in eugenics, which is awesome. Um, wow. If you don't know what eugenics are, uh, it just think Hitler. <laughs> so, um, and then this is awesome. He claimed to have invented a death ray. Um, although he was a pacifist, he... Um, Claimed to have invented a death ray he called the Teleforce, which he said would send concentrated beams of particles through the free air of such tremendous energy that they will bring down a fleet of 10,000 enemy airplanes at a distance of 200 miles. (laughs) So, um, (laughs) when you are driving that Tesla, remember for whom it is named. The pigeon screwing death ray building pacifist celibate hotel dwelling <laughs> hitler hitler-esque pearl hater <laughs> uh, so it's, it's so funny how somebody that is brilliant in some ways that completely eclipses who they really were back then like we, we think oh yeah nikola tesla what a great man oh he was robbed but then you hear this kind of stuff, and it's like, well, <laughs> was he, though? He was, he was a little nuts. He has a cool mustache, though. And that he has is, a cool car named after him. So, yeah. there is that. so mm-hmm. those are freaky facts about the iconic inventor. And I've been calling him Nicholas this whole time. Nikola Tesla. I'm sorry. He's serving. I've been judging it this whole time, so yes. it's fine. So that was an article from the Huffington Post by David Freeman, so we don't get sued. All right. Fantastic. That's my show and tell. We have the Chicago Tribune here. Finding good dog meat is a delicacy matter <laughs> as Olympics near. By Ronald E. Yates, Chicago Tribune, August 16th, 1988. Wow, that's so cool. It is getting hard to find a good bowl of dog stew or a steaming plate of worms in Seoul. 
The city government, in an effort to avoid offending the sensibilities and the palates of visitors during the 1988 Summer Olympics Games, Olympic Games, which begin here next month, has banned the sale of such traditional Korean delicacies as earthworm soup and dog stew from the city's main thoroughfares and from streets near Olympic sites. <laughs> The rest of the city, it's okay, but not near where they're having the Olympics. Right. That now, just makes them look bad. The Olympics, the committee that decides who gets to have the Olympics, they should already know this sort of thing. If they already gave the Olympics to these people, why are they going to change their ways? <laughs> the Olympics already knew that was going to happen, so I just don't think it's a problem. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let's, let's try this. Go to the Olympics um, and come back with a taste for Fido, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you kind of lick your lips every time you see your pet. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Nevertheless, hundreds of restaurants specializing in the dishes still thrive in the city's back alleys, which <laughs> sounds good to me. Uh, where few Do you want to buy a puppy? <laughs> <laughs> On a stick? Free range. <laughs> well, dude, this was before the whole the like organic, non-GMO, you know. So uh, I got him out of a sewer, man. <laughs> <laughs> a little flavorful, if you ask me, but... South Koreans who enjoy these ancient entrees and say they are not planning to stop eating them just because the eyes of the world will be focused on Seoul from September 17th to October 2nd. Now that's like old man level confidence. <laughs> For real. I don't care that my pants are crossing my, or touching my boobs. And, and my balls are being split by the seam. You can see each individual nut. You and know. my socks are almost covering my knees. I am who I am. Yep. I don't Thank care you. if the world sees me eating dogs. <laughs> It just tastes too damn good. <laughs> Which is ironically what my grandpa used to say. <laughs> <laughs> wow, where in those pants? Now, the same thing happened 1964-ish, Japan, with sashimi and sushi. But here we are nowadays, everybody loves, well, most people are like, yeah, sushi. So you're but saying in 20 or 30 years, of. we're going to have golden retriever on the <laughs> One can only hope, right? <laughs> like traditional, I mean, I want to, I like... Uh, ethnic foods, and I don't know if ethnic foods is, is politically correct anymore, but <laughs> so, you know, slap my wrist if, if, if I'm wrong. But so that was a thing, uh, and now here we are with, with that. So I'm thinking, yeah, let's let's get the dogs in here, but who let the dogs out <laughs> <laughs> into my stew? <laughs> but he, wait a minute, we're, we're forgetting about the, the, the worms. If the world learned to eat raw fish and other strange-looking sea creatures that seemed to be barely dead, couldn't it be... Or couldn't it just as well learn to eat grilled dog meat and spicy earthworm soup? They did not at first say it was spicy. Now this sounds... <laughs> now it makes sense, fried yeah. worms. Did anybody else, when they read that book as a kid, do you remember that book? I remember it. I did not read it. I, I always wanted to try fried earthworms. No joke. Because I read that book, I was very influenced. I was probably that kid that if I had been allowed to watch Beavis and Butthead, I would have shoved a firecracker up a cat's ass. <laughs> and because I want to try everything the media tells me, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, probably not. It's probably not going to happen. Let's see. Watching people dining on worms and dogs might send waves of indigestion. What else do we have here? Oh, it's called kegogi, which is dog meat. <laughs> and girongi ai tang, which is earthworm soup. Which, if you, if it's said like that, you don't know what it well, is. Man, that sounds like yeah. sophisticated. Right. Like, yeah, I had some gyeonggi and some... Kegogi and... Kegogi and... Uh, yeah, oh, wow. Know, right? yeah, he's yeah. been to many nations. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's well-traveled. He's wise. Where, where's no, he he's, taking he's my going chihuahua? To, town to eat the bulldog. <laughs> if you ever need me to ho or dog sit for you, you know. He um, showed up at the Humane Society with like a fork and a knife and a bit. <laughs> oh, that one? That, oh, that Dawson, that looks good. I, I just imagined you, think you with still a, a, like a red lobster bib, though. I don't know <laughs> yeah. what. It's going. got like a puppy on it? <laughs> <laughs> with its mouth taped shut. Oh, oh. This is getting bad. I know somebody that got in trouble for something similar. No, oh, shut up. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's see. I think once foreigners tried it, they would like it, said Lee, who, like many dog fan or dog meat fanciers, is a little upset over the meat's rising cost. The government <laughs> crackdown has forced the price of a plate of dog meat and rice up to $5, <laughs> about twice the cost of a dish of beef or pork. Now, let's talk about inflation for a second. <laughs> it's now 2021. How much do you think that dog meat would cost. $5. Five bucks back in 1988. 1988. So 33 years ago. Dog's expensive. So you're probably talking like somewhere like $18, $20 maybe. Right. And how much is it to to adopt a dog from the 
Two hundred dollars. <laughs> <means that>, right? <laughs> You're waiting so, to cost to see if it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> trying to this out. Should I buy the meat or should I harvest the meat? It's like, hmm. Yeah. What, why do you want this dog for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to feed him dinner? That's nice. No. no. Yes. No. Uh, this person says, indeed, dogs consumed in restaurants are specially raised for that purpose, though some, admitted one Poshintang, I don't know what that is, restaurant owners are strays. Some are strays. They eat strays. I've never prepared anybody's pet in a stew, said restaurant owner Yoon. That is simply bad business. <laughs> <laughs> when you had the collar flowing in your shoe. <laughs> It sends the wrong message. And, you know, the, the tags usually have, like, the phone number of the owner. Call hey. Your dog was delicious, sir. Thank you. You raised him well. What were you feeding him? Um, let's see. Korea is one of those places where you don't let your dog off the leash, says Seoul resident. The less permanent businessman. If you do, he might become somebody's lunch. Oh. So... My question to you guys is, if you knew it was dog meat, would you try it since it's already dead? I mean, if you think about it, all the animals we eat, if you had to look a cow in the eye while eating a burger, would you feel good about it? I'd be turned on. Well, that's, <laughs> that's a whole other... That's not the question. That I would, is it the same touching cow? Yourself. We're talking about the same cow? No. Like no. The cow <laughs> <looking at it? laughs> I don't know if that I... That would be difficult. Yeah. It would be. But no, if you knew it was a dog and you were in another country, nobody would ever know. Would you taste it out of just sheer curiosity? So I think it's a social construct. I mean, we love dogs. I, right. I love dogs as a pet. Not to eat. PETA, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, some people have pet chickens. My wife had a pet chicken growing up. And, I mean, you can really, you know, become attached to any of them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like pigs or... So yeah. I think, I mean, it's just the culture. I don't think there's anything morally wrong with it. It's just weird to me because we don't That's eat dogs. We, yeah. Right. yeah. Well, it, in the article, they do talk about how there it, there is a separation. They do raise the dog special for that. I've heard and they're, that. And they're a type of dog. I can't remember the breed. I'm not going to look it up. But uh, And then, of course, they have their pets, too. And they would never think of eating their pets. Yeah. It's just it's kind of weird. I could see like having like a pet like pot belly pig or something. And it's not going to get me to stop eating bacon because... Sure. If I had a pet pig. You'd feed him the bacon. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> now that's kind of immoral. <laughs> that, that's kind of twisted. Sorry. But. Whatever turns you on. I don't on. know. I, I, think, I think you could separate pets with food. Because. Yeah. I agree. Farmers like do it part, all the time. Part of, part of the reason why you can eat meat to begin with is because it doesn't look <laughs> like meat. It doesn't. Like eat right. a hamburger, it doesn't feel like a cow. I can separate it in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair, right? Well, it doesn't okay, look or let's feel like a little an animal. Would so. you, or further, I should say, would you guys eat human meat? Just out of curiosity, if you're, no. you know, at a, you know, in talking? another country. Let's say you're hanging out with like a cannibal tribe. <laughs> like like you do. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe it's obvious there's a toe, you know. Maybe if it means I'm getting out of there alive and that's the only way I can, you know, then yeah. Usually I'm I'm, politeness only goes so far. <laughs> say no thanks, I'm full, you know, but. You're, you're, I, just, I just ate. Oh, sorry, I ate Steve over there 15 <laughs> minutes ago. Yeah. Sorry. I have stuff. I'd like to think I'd never eat human, but. People in desperate circumstances, you know, like like in South Park when the power goes out for four hours and they resort to cannibalism, you know. <laughs> yeah, that Eric sounds Roberts. that sounds justified. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to feel like that the, way. The like the Donner like, Party or that movie Alive, that yeah. Uruguayan rugby team that crashed in the Andes. Right. We can't say you wouldn't have done what they were doing oh, in that situation, but right. I, I think I think you South Park, or think, you know, four hours without the power. <laughs> <laughs> You Sorry, Charlie. Lose a part of your soul, though, when you do it. I don't know if you could ever, like, come back from that, you know? Yeah. So. That's fair. But, oh, that's dark. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel bad when I'm, like, in the supermarket going past the poultry and the fish aisle and the head is still on the fish and it's just looking at me with that one eye and I poke yeah. it. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I feel bad. I have a hard time when you can see, like, the, like you say, the face and the eyes and stuff, like, I love bacon, I love ham, I love sausage. I'm never going to stop eating those things. But like a luau where they have the whole pig there, I do kind of have a problem with that. Not like, do you not like morally. Your lips next to the ear and you just whisper, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and you bite the ear. <laughs> I just don't want to see the yeah. animal. Like a hamburger or piece of bacon, it doesn't look like an animal to That's me. That's fair. 
It's, there's no moral difference, I don't think, but I don't yeah. want to see the animal's face staring at me while I eat it. So, <laughs> But to each their own. Again, there's nothing to each their wrong own. with that. I mean, it's you know, some people don't like my personal thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, apparently. And he did some great things, so. Maybe. <laughs> he could have done and, and so some, many great more. And some not so great things. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, he didn't even ask me if I had something to talk about. Oh, I'm sorry. About. You're rude. Well, you, do you have something to talk about? Well, yes, actually. And it it's on topic, kind of, because it has to do with dogs also. And Tesla. Weird how you were able to bridge the two. <laughs> but anyway, it's the one that you sent us a few weeks back about the... Remembering the Moscow water dog. Oh. Do you remember that one? <laughs> yes. Did you look into it? I did look into it because awesome. I thought that was hilarious in a way that shouldn't have been, but it somehow was. All right, so I, confession, I didn't get a chance to look into it, so educate me. You are a piece of shit. It's been weeks. <laughs> you had time while you anyway, were taking a shit. I don't true. care. I know. I'm sorry. Okay, so yes, I will explain it. It was a, a type of dog that was bred by the Russian Navy. They hoped to create the ultimate rescue dog. So they selected some of the biggest dog breeds they could find. Let's see, it was a mix of a, uh, let's see what it says. Like a Newfoundland, the Caucasian and Eastern European Shepherds. Um, let's see what it is. I have so much to say right now. <laughs> but they, they needed something that could, you know, had a big fluffy coat to hold up in inclement weather. And since it was the Navy, they wanted to use these to rescue people from drowning, so it had to be strong enough to swim <laughs> while holding on, while a person was holding on to it. Right, right. The problem is it also picked up some of these dogs' more aggressive tendencies, so the dogs were much more likely to attack the victim who was drowning than to actually save them. So they, ev- <laughs> they eventually stopped breeding them, and the breed has now gone extinct. I guess it's been extinct since the 1980s, but I thought that was the most hilarious thing ever. You're already, you're having a bad day. You fell off your boat, you're struggling, and you see this, like, bloodthirsty Cujo coming towards you, like, you know, drooling like a St. Bernard. Yeah. You think it's going to help you. You reach out your hand and, like, bite your it's arm off of the... It's got those little barrels under its neck. You're like, yay! <laughs> and then, like, bites your arm off at the wrist or something and grabs your jugular and holds you under until you stop taking the... It brings your cor- corpse back to land, though, right? <laughs> For a proper burial. <laughs> Isn't that, like, the most Russian thing you could ever think of? It's so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> In the it's Russia, almost... we save by killing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, well... Well, drownings are down 98%. I mean, dog, dog attacks are, are, up. are up 280%, but hey, we had no drownings on our watch this past month. Oh, it just good. sounds like a threat. Like, you see the Coast Guard, like, pull up to a drowning. You person. better not be drowning. <laughs> release the hounds. Stop drowning or re- release the dogs on you. <laughs> you better swim faster. <laughs> Yeah, another thing that would teach people to swim. Ivan. That would teach people how to swim really fast. <laughs> I wonder if I could get one of those dogs. Well, no, you said they're gone, but I was thinking I'd get one of those dogs to teach my son to ride his bike. <laughs> <laughs> ride fast, yeah, son! I release the, the dog training dog. wheels off. All right, go, Cujo. <laughs> Mommy, I learned how to ride a bike and got 27 stitches. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have an arm. <laughs> oh, that was... Yeah, good. I mean, I thought that was awesome. Cause, hey, it, like you said, isn't that the most Russian thing? It's like, well, technically, he didn't drown. You know, like, <laughs> we did save him. <laughs> you guys understand the reason we did this. Because <laughs> drowning is the Navy's jurisdiction. It's like, they have a clean slate. Right. Dog bites, that's animal control's problem. <laughs> I can just see, like, the person who came up with this. You didn't read the whole memo. <laughs> when it comes to the part about saving the life, right. we, yeah. we bring corpse back. <laughs> no. We got drunk reading it, I know. So, to, you know, to tie it to the previous story, is it wrong to eat dogs if they would eat you if given the chance? No. It's eat or be eaten. Exactly. It's a dog-human-eat-dog Human work. You know, I don't know. What I'm not afraid of sharks anymore. Like if I'm in the ocean and there's a Russian like boat coming, I'm afraid I'm gonna be rescued. Air, air quotes. <laughs> I'm one of these dogs. <laughs> so, if the dog doesn't work, they'll release the sharks to help <laughs> drowning victims. They probably crossbred the dogs and the sharks anyway. <laughs> 
Yeah, so lesson one. That was, that was, was the most podcast. Russian thing I'd ever heard. So <laughs> Yeah, it really was. I'm so glad you looked into that. And I'm so pissed at Jason for not even knowing I'm about sorry. it. I'm sorry. You know, oh, I'm busy. I run a business, and I'm also doing this, and I'm doing that. You know, oh, come on. Excuses, excuses. I'm sorry. I'll, how about I prepare you some warmly cooked dog nuggets? I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> that, that's what we do here. We educate. I doubt most people have ever heard of a Russian water dog. Moscow water dog. Right. Don't go swimming in the ocean in Russia. <laughs> or they'll seek the dogs on you. Now water is no longer an obstacle <laughs> for these guard dogs. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, that's that perfect. Hilarious. One of my... One of my oldest favorite stories that I've told him from when he was little was we call it the goldfish story. And he was like one and a half. We were laying next to each other in bed, just watching TV and he was eating goldfish crackers. And then just like randomly, he like looks over at me, reaches over and like pulls my shirt up a little bit. So my stomach is exposed. He takes out a chewed up goldfish from his mouth, sticks it in my belly button then pulls my shirt back over to cover it. And just goes back to watching TV and eating his goldfish <laughs> as if nothing happened. And I'm just sitting there with a soggy goldfish in my in my belly button. Like, what the hell just happened? He didn't say a word the entire time. And he like never <laughs> talked about this again. And he was only like one and a half, so I couldn't really talk about it anyway. So. <laughs> to this day, I have no idea what the hell that was about. Oh. <laughs> was like the funniest thing ever. And... He loves hearing that story. He cracks up every time I tell him. Oh, that is so yeah, funny, man. Get, that's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pull my shirt back up, fish out the soggy remains of a goldfish cracker. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Kids are awesome. I want to start off with the, um, it looks like it is a banana-shaped banana cutter. So, you know how you have the, you know, the, the egg thing where you, you know, put it on the egg and it slices the egg up. It's yeah. like that, except it's shaped like a banana. Um, this <laughs> is the, the Hutzler 571 Banana Slicer. Um, and it's got five stars. And the subject of the review is Saved My Marriage by Mrs. <laughs> Toledo. And she says, what can I say about the 571B Banana Slicer that hasn't already been said about the wheel, penicillin, or the iPhone? This is one of the greatest inventions of all time. My husband and I would argue constantly over who had to cut the day's banana slices. It's one of those chores no one in all caps wants to do. You know, the old, I spend the entire day rearing our children. Maybe you can pitch in a little and cut the bananas. And of course you think I have the energy to slave over your damn bananas. <laughs> I worked a 12 hour shift just to come home to this. These are the things that can destroy uh, an entire relationship. It got to the point where our children could sense the tension <laughs> The minute I heard our six-year-old girl in her bedroom reenacting our daily banana fight with her Barbie dolls, I knew we had to make a change. That's when I found 571B Banana Slicer. Our marriage has never been healthier, and we've been we've even incorporated it into our lovemaking. Thanks, no. 571B Banana Slicer. <laughs> uh, the picture yeah, makes awesome. it that much better, too. Uh, oh. I'll post this on our Facebook page for those who are so inclined. Um, oh, that's fantastic. But I'd like to, and I'll, yeah, I'll post the link to the whole article so you can enjoy all these reviews. But let me give you just a couple more here. Um, <clears throat> so this one is for the Nexus Silent Wired Mouse SM-8500. The five stars, and it says, the subject is Works Great by Lucille. Um, it says, my girlfriend and I were on the verge of breaking up because I would keep her awake at night with my constant mouse clicking. Not anymore. Consider this relationship saved. This mouse is so silent, she will sometimes forget I'm even home and invite her lover over. He's a pretty <laughs> cool guy. <laughs> nice. Uh, and then there is, uh, I'll, I'll save that one for last, but there's this penguin mask. Um, where'd it go? John. Yeah, penguin made, mask. Uh, this one's actually for John because. Uh, <laughs> He likes penguins in a really unwholesome way. That's yeah. That's the let, the nicest way you could say that. He's going to read this review because because it's a penguin mask. And if you look at the article, <laughs> the mask is really frightening. It's not cute. It looks realistic, and the, oh. the penguin's mouth is molded in a way that makes it look <laughs> like it's like screaming. So go ahead, John. <laughs> uh, four stars. It says, "I wear this mask to sing lullabies to my children." 
by someone named <laughs> Sir Chubbs. <laughs> I wear this mask to sing lullabies to my children. They're terrified of the mask. Whenever they protest about their bedtime or ask for too many sweets, I whip on the mask and they soon know who is the King Penguin. <laughs> Someone else responded, good idea for future parenting, LOL. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. All right, and then the grand finale uh, here. And this one is a little uh, adult. So I hope, uh, but it was on Amazon, which means it, you know, can't be all that unwholesome, right? So, well... This is for the, and this is spelled H-O-N-Y, because it must be some kind of Korean-made product. The Honey Mail Chastity Device Metal Wire Cage. <laughs> or it was supposed to be it. horny and they forgot the R. Right, so it's it's very Chinese or, you know, uh, 40 millimeter, 45 millimeter, and 50 millimeter are in the title for some reason. Um, <laughs> but you got the choice. For some Not reason. Always endowed well endowed as others so but you're not the smallest i've ever seen thanks <laughs> <laughs> someone somewhere out there is probably less well endowed oh things i've heard the fact that you've nice. seen him makes me very jealous <laughs> <laughs> why do we always end up on this topic um because that's this what is the podcast awesome was show. built upon it was built upon your penis that's what this whole show is about <laughs> So the subject of this review, and of course it's five stars, it says, Keeps My Son From Sinning by <laughs> James Schreiber. My son is going going through, I think they've misspelled it. My son's going to be starting puberty in the next year. So since his father left me, and I am now raising him on my own, I bought one of these for him to wear when he is not being supervised. And again, I don't think I described the product. It is a cage, metal cage-like Thing with a padlock on it that would go over the male genitalia so back to the review it's a male chastity belt oh, basically right? yeah it's a male chastity belt so she says it is well made i made sure he is unable to take it off without removing the lock i know it is a great product because he absolutely hates it i don't enjoy seeing him unhappy but i enjoy the peace of mind knowing that he isn't messing around at school sinning at night and most of all i'm glad he's remaining pure for the lord He's counting the days, eight years, until he's old enough to join the seminary and be able to take it off. Great product. Thanks again. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, it sounds like that explains device. why they needed to crack down on this. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if you get a chance, check out some of these reviews. They're, they're really, really hilarious. Um, oh, one more. And I'll just mention, I won't read it. But there's a review for the Holy Bible, the King James Version. Um and it starts out, it says, for those of you who don't know, this is God's second novel after the Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's what, that's what I found on the interwebs for this week. And I wanted to share that with you and all of our, all of our listeners. Nice. Thank you, because that made my day. <laughs> I'm finding some really cool products on this, on this page. <laughs> I don't give a shit what, what people are saying about the stuff. I'm going to well, be Your son is going to be going to puberty in about five year years. So, you know. Yeah. Gosh, Might as well start now. Uh, let's see here. Okay. <clears throat> so I am on ranker.com right now. Doesn't say who, who wrote this. Uh, I'm not going to read the title because I kind of, yeah. Okay, here we go. In 1931, 56-year-old Carl Tanzler was working at a hospital in Florida when he fell in love with a 22-year-old Cuban-American woman named Maria Elena Milagro de Hoyos. Um, nice accent. I do the, I do, yeah, I do that at restaurants. I'm very pretentious. Like I'm all, <laughs> I have the tapas. Yeah, the tapas. Um, let's see, where is it? When the couple met, De Hoyos was dying from tuber tuberculosis, a terminal condition in the 1930s, because it's not now. It's not terminal now. You can just have tuberculosis and it's fine. <laughs> Throughout the last year of her life, Tanzler reportedly showered the young woman with gifts and even purchased an expensive mausoleum when she passed. After her death, Tanzler visited De Hoyos's grave singing Spanish love songs to her. He later claimed that her spirit encouraged him to remove her from the grave and take her home. So one night, <laughs> so one night in 1933, allegedly haunted by these ghostly requests, Tanzler carried De Hoyos back to home in a wagon. Over the next seven plus years, Tanzler preserved the woman. He replaced her skin with silk and wax, stuffed her body with rags to keep its shape, and used perfumes to disguise the smell. It wasn't until 1940 when De Hoyos' sister Florinda, which, that is tragic, Florinda, 
<laughs> Sorry, Florinda, if you're listening. Stormed into his home with police in tow that the truth was discovered. Tanzler wasn't actually prosecuted because of the statute of limitations on his initial crime had already lapsed. <laughs> if ever, if ever there was a hero, it's this man. He's my hero. He committed probably some of the most heinous acts anybody could, got caught, didn't get in trouble. Of limitations, Did they baby. take the body away? <laughs> it doesn't say, and, you know. They're like, just don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so since you didn't name the article, I'm going to guess it's uh, Heartwarming Love Stories is the article that you're reading from. Written by yes. <laughs> Something says true love, like digging your true love up. Oh, he really digs her up. I like it. He really he digs her. <laughs> Randomly, uh, the other day, I for no reason, I was thinking of a friend I had in elementary school named Clint, and you know, I wasn't friends with him very long. And honestly, there was really nothing memorable about our friendship. But the one thing I remember about him is he had the hots for that cartoon fix-it mouse gadget on the old oh, Rescue Rangers yes. TV show, the Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Anyway, <laughs> that got me to remember that I had read once that there is an actual Russian cult that worships Gadget Hack Wrench as their goddess. So I, I looked that up, and it looks like it's, a, let's see, centered in a Russian, called, a Russian city called... Uh, what, Nizhny Novgorod, or something like that. Like, are all your stories going to be about Russians? The last one worked out <laughs> so well. So you are so racist, possibly. dude. Anyway, this is an article from something called the Mary Sue by Scott Smitelli, published August 18, two thousand ten. Originally, but I've seen this posted other places too. But anyway, it goes Gadget Hack Wrench, animated mouse from the Disney animated series Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Pilot, mechanic, inventor, central figure of worship in a Russian cult. <laughs> wait, this is, wait, what? Yes, apparently their love for Gadget burns with such unbridled passion. A group of people in Russia have built an entire religion around her likeness. They pray to posters of Gadget, write songs about her, and place stickers of her anywhere they can. But really, we'll let their words speak for themselves. She is the divine being, the most untouched and perfect sibling of the great God on earth. Why I love her? It's a stupid question. How could I not love the goddess? She's quick, cute, optimistic, and her level of technical knowledge is unachievable for a mortal being. Anyway. Yeah, so it is pictures of them with cutouts of her and all that, and the author says, sure, it's understandable why some people might be attracted to the type of woman who could build a functional grappling hook out of nothing but materials accessible to a woodland <laughs> rodent. And yes, Gadget is the type of female cartoon character that, when Googled with safe search off, will return several <laughs> images that will force you to revisit a number of your childhood memories in a much more inappropriate context. <laughs> but outright worship of her? That's a little weird, even by internet standards. <laughs> So there you go. The Russian cult that worships Gadget Hack Wrench from Rescue Rangers is a thing. Oh, man. Why have, if you can think of something, it's a thing. Why have we not been invaded by aliens? Yet? No, I know <laughs> why they're not here. They just show up in the sky. They access our internet and they're like, ah, oh, hell no. And they just go on to the next planet. <laughs> oh, God. Moving on. It's like in Age of Ultron when Ultron goes on the internet and decides in five seconds that humanity has to be destroyed. <laughs> You know about bronies, right? Unfortunately. If yeah, bronies absolutely. is a real thing, and apparently it is, why not the gadget cult? Uh, apparently, I, BronyCon... Why went, not? BronyCon went for like nine or ten years. I think they only stopped at like two years ago or something it, like that. Oh, really? Was it because of the pandemic? Oh, two years ago. I think 2019. Anyway, for those who don't know, bronies are... Full-grown men. Adult male fans of the show My Little Pony's Friendship is Magic. <laughs> I read It said, like, most of them are adult men in their 20s. It's like 75% or, or 85% are male. It says 75% um, are single. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> number of their 
parents. Surprise, <laughs> surprise. And that's who Anonymous is. is I'm throwing that out there. Bronies. That's Bronies. Anonymous. The hacker group. Bro and ponies. Yeah. It's, I, I'm not going to say that because I think Anonymous could really kick our asses they, digitally. Well, I'm sure they could, but uh, I... My little pony, my little pony. <laughs> there is... For some of them, there is a, a sexual component to their <laughs> affection for the show. Those ones are called cloppers. <laughs> oh wow! So I okay, I'm down. I'm Wait, down with the gadget. A, oh. a big racism and white supremacy angle with them. Which, oh no! Not, which infiltrated their ranks. Not the but I, I don't want yeah I don't want to give a bad name to all the good non-racist bronies out there. We know you're not all like that. <laughs> I don't want to lump you all together. The, the good, clean bronies who are just doing it for the perverse love of the perverse love a of child's a, cartoon, a child's pony cartoon. I don't want to lump you in with all the, <laughs> the racism and the <laughs> imagery that accompanies some of the fan art. So I, if I had the, just making that clear, if I had the money, <laughs> I'd run, a, run a study, cross compare the sex offender registry with brony like. <laughs> lists of bronies and see if there's much overlap i'm gonna gamble on it and say there's that there would be <laughs> i think you should do this this research project and come back to us next episode with the results with the data okay yeah I'm go fund me on the thing and and then i'll go to mexico with all the money so well you can do that with your passport i'm going to russia with my passport <laughs> <laughs> they're not a party there right Gadget it sounds like it are you kidding me Fox i thought she was hot yeah water dogs <laughs> <laughs> I love um, Russia. I had an adventure this last weekend too. Did awesome. I this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead. I uh, so I was at a science fiction convention in Raleigh, and uh, I was actually the uh, not the guest of honor, the recurring something. I don't know. I was like guest of honor number three. I was like after David Weber and Larry Korea, I was like the third head on the totem pole, <laughs> which was great because they like gave me a hotel. It's the first time a con ever like said, hey, I'm, we'll, get, we'll pay the hotel. Wow. And I noticed they didn't have a musical guest. So I said, OK, I'm going to be your musical guest. So I they gave me an hour and I set up a concert and I emailed a Zoom link out to my mailing list and I posted it on MeWe. And, and I have since learned that, that when you do that, you're supposed to take certain steps, which I was, hadn't really thought through. At about 13 minutes into my live concert, some fellow named Mariusz Mateusz, Mateusz Gorski, suddenly shows up with a very close-up image of his cannibal entree uh, on, the, uh, on the camera. Uh, and uh, yeah, and, and uh, now I was recording <laughs> said entree okay and he was he was trying to show it off to advantage he'd clearly lit it and he was you know showing showing us the various cuts you could get from it uh and uh and fortunately uh yeah i i mean i this is not a this is not a cut of meat i favor uh so uh, you're more of a porterhouse kind of guy right I, i'm more of a porterhouse yeah yeah we were recording uh but fortunately zoom records two views or, or at least it did one was just my window so there so that's the one that i then i, I put that concert up on youtube and it didn't <laughs> show the other images of people joining the concert showing off their assets uh but if you watch it at about the 13 minute 20 second mark one of the other attendees in zoom yells shut down that video shut down that video and that's the reason why uh, is uh, is because there was an unexpected, uh, uh, you know, uninvited guest. So, yeah, that was my last week adventure. And, and I've learned now there's a function where you just turn it off and nobody else can show their turn their camera on. Right? That's, what, that's the purpose for having that function. It did not occur to me that someone would want to do this. Oh, man. <laughs> that is a good way to find out, though. <laughs> yeah, Mateusz, wherever you are, you know. <laughs> and now, for some reason, you have like a whole bunch of new people on your mailing list, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Have you been watching anything or reading anything uh, lately? That uh... Uh, so Emily went, well, man. So I, I, my, I got serious about my mailing list, like six months ago no like nine months ago and, and one thing i said is hey what should i what should i put in this mailing list and and one of the people said was well, tell us what you're reading so like i now feel like i have to read at least a book a week 
uh, and I've got a little bit of a, ba a buffer. I've got like a stack of six books that I've read, but have not yet told the mailing list so I could go a couple of weeks without reading, right? So I'm reading a lot. I'm reading a lot of science fiction these days. I just read uh, Brian Aldous's classic sci-fi novel, Hot House. Uh, I read Ian uh, Banks' first culture novel. Uh, what I'm what I'm watching um, is a Netflix produced. I think it's a one season out of Netflix India crime story called Delhi Crime, huh. which is sort of wonderful. Like you watch it, and it's it, the first blush you feel like, wow, this is like deeply amateur. <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, it's a show like Law and Order is so heavily produced and, and it, they're just really taut and punchy and to the point. And this is not, there's all these conversations where it'll be like, well, now should we should we should go get dinner. Do you want to have dinner <laughs> outside the corner? No, it's too oily. Oh, I heard they use coconut oil in other food. I don't believe it. Uh, right. Like all, all these conversations. And apparently, right, and I, I can only assume they know what they're talking about, but apparently the way you solve crimes in India is that all of your policemen know a guy. Oh, I know a guy in the bus industry, and I will call him. He for sure will tell us who owns this white bus. Oh, don't worry. That guy over in the Eastern District owes me a favor. Like, like that's that's completely impression this show is giving. I don't assume, I think it's done by Indians. I think they, they must know what they're talking about. Like there's a, there's the victim has bite marks, and it's like episode three where some guy says, you know, I saw on this American television show you can measure the bite marks and you can compare them to the the, the suspect's mouth. And they're like, oh, let us try it. Like, so like the whole, you know, the, the US crime shows got obsessed with like crime scene uh, investigation, I don't know, starting like 25 years ago or something. It's cops going in to little villages and like, do you want me to shame you in front of your mother? No, then you come with us. Don't worry, madam. He is only coming with us to help answer questions. I'm going to beat the shit out of you, motherfucker. Right? Like, <laughs> so it's like, on the one hand, it's like, it's sort of rough from what you're expecting. But then it's like, there's this whole other culture, right? That sort of thinks about crime stories. Not, it's like, it's not Sherlock Holmes, you know, it's not, it's not, oh, let's measure the trajectory of the bullet, right? It's all, it's like societal. We're going to, we, we, I, we know people that can help us who can answer questions, go to the village, go over to, right? So I've really been enjoying about six, five or six episodes in. It's like sort of bad, but also sort of awesome. <laughs> I'm definitely going to watch that. That sounds so good. What's it called again? It's called Delhi Crime. Delhi Crime. And, and my favorite, my favorite is this very kind of homely, slightly rough looking sergeant. I forget what his name is, but starting about episode two, like he's mad, his back hurts and he's getting pissed because it's a pretty <laughs> heinous crime. So he starts just saying, motherfucker, motherfucker, everybody, uh, constantly. I'm going to beat the shit out of you, motherfucker. Why you do that, you motherfucker? And like over and over again. So like, so like it really ramps into the profanity, you know, as the episodes roll on. Uh, apropos of nothing, I guess, except just that I'm amused. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> That reminds me of something that uh, John texted today about uh, mating calls. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to hear about that again. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, let's, well, let's go there. I gave him a text from Zach. All right, let's set it up then. Well, I gotta find it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the honors. If, oh, you've, you've got two well, phones. Can, wow, look at this I guy. Know, he's professional. Yeah, a work phone and a home phone. And I'm over here going broke trying to make this podcast happen, and you're just like, <laughs> oh, excuse me, let, my get, let me get my alternate phone. <laughs> it's like a brick, you know, the gray bricks from yeah. the 1990s. <laughs> and he's okay, always that... talking about stock market shit on it. <laughs> How about you read the text that you sent to us, the meme? <laughs> okay. So I send him a meme and it says, bro, y'all ever think about how fucked up those fake mating calls are used in hunting? Imagine a girl DMing you, come fuck me, and you pull up and get shot by a dude in a camo jacket. <laughs> Imagine you chilling with your mo moose homies and you hear a woman moose moaning saying, who's going to fuck this moose pussy? And you'd be like, shit, I guess that's me. <laughs> your boys be like, Ew, fam, that's a bit sus. <laughs> Bitches don't be doing that. And you like, nah, you just jealous. <laughs> then you get capped on your way to deliver that moose dick. <laughs> so. 
that's uh, we've hit the bottom <laughs> of this podcast. This is where. Or is this the pinnacle? <laughs> this might we might be peaking right now. So, so yeah, we got that meme from Zach, and I said, well, and the moose really aren't the only victims. What if what if I'm strutting around nude in the woods? <laughs> Hoping to get my freak on, I'm going to respond to this fake mating call expecting a hot evening of moose loving, then you show up and instead you just find some bearded dude in camo with a rifle. I mean, it's so embarrassing when that happens, am I right? I mean, I'll probably end up having sex with him anyway, because at that point he basically owes it to me, right? It's just not the same. So yeah. The moral is, down with those fake mating calls that hunters use. It's just misleading on so many levels. I wonder if we could start a GoFundMe for a movement or a change.org, you know, like, put put this in there and just say, look, this is awful to do to moose and... And caribou a and people who and some know, may people or may not find themselves walking in the woods with a full erection <laughs> reasons that may not I just, be specified i just had this vision of those trail cams you know the ones that are like black and white at night you just see like a deer walk across maybe a, a raccoon and then john for the full on erection struck in like black hand, and white night hand, hand up to my ear what's that i hear is that a moose in heat score <laughs> And then, no. It's some Duck Dynasty bastard. (laughs) Your sexual escapades, every time, they get me every time. Boy, was my face red. (laughs) And your balls blue. (laughs) No, the Duck Dynasty guy and you make, like, eye contact across, like, ten yards. I mean, he ended up being pretty cool, but... Next thing you know, it's Brokeback Mountain in a pump tent. <laughs> the 70s poor music is playing. Right. Did he make you soup on his campfire, too, just to kind of set the mood? It worked out okay, but those first few moments were pretty awkward. So, oh. what are you doing here with a full erection? I don't know. What are you doing here? The music starts playing. Bam. He starts, like, loosening his camo shirt and <laughs> taking off his bandana, you know. It's, oh. Whips his hair. Oh my god. Whips his beard around seductively, you know. Yeah. Because it's halfway down his chest. And... Oh, my head hurts. Oh, that is fantastic. Uh, podcast over. Yep. <laughs> We've peaked. That's one they will never have on Pornhub. <laughs> and they should. <laughs> uh, this is from the New York Post, September 17th, 2019. And I'm just going to paraphrase the article, but apparently the police in Trumbull County, Ohio are looking for two men that are suspected of DUI. And that doesn't sound that unusual until you remember that Trumbull County, Ohio is Amish country. (laughs) These men were found, they were spotted by police at one in the morning driving a horse-drawn buggy while intoxicated. (laughs) They were pounding down beers when the police saw them, and they had the buggy outfitted with a massive stereo system that was blasting out rock music at one in the morning. Oh, I love this. And so when the cops pulled them over for questioning, the two men jumped out of the buggy and ran into the nearby woods. And the horse took off without them down the road. The cops chased down the buggy and finally stopped it and found bunches of empty beer bottles on the floor... And a 12-pack of Michelob Ultra on top of the buggy. <laughs> oh, they were, they were counting calories. I just want to let you know oh, that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, of course, the stereo system hooked up in the back. <laughs> the music. They have not found the men. They were hoping they would turn themselves in when they came to claim their horse and buggy. <laughs> but as of now, they have still not been. Damn you, Ezekiah. <laughs> I, lo- I love how the horse ran. Yeah, the horse goes like, oh, crap. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it's the popo. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about this, the, the only disappointing part about this article is I was hoping they would, would have caught these men and that it was like a hot female cop <laughs> so we could have heard some like drunken Amish pickup lines. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to raise a barn with you. <laughs> you really churn me butter. <laughs> I don't know why this is Scottish accent. I don't it's, know. It's, it's, it's German, right? I don't even know that. I think it's German. Yeah. It's like, my beer is not the only thing long and full right now, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> you know, lady, plowing doesn't just have to refer to our fields. <laughs> you sure do have some nice Incas. <laughs> <laughs> Still know why you're Ohio s- Amish accent is Scottish. It's not even Scottish. I don't know what it is, but... <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so the <laughs> Trumbull County, Ohio, horse and buggy Amish DUIs. I, I would give my my right eye if they would be playing Amish Paradise while they were with their rock. That would be yes. awesome. That would have been. Yeah. <laughs> I love this tune. <laughs> now I'm Scottish. He so gets us. <laughs> this weird, this weird, weird Al, Al gets us. <laughs> he knows what it's like to raise uh. a bar and then churn butter. Yep. <laughs> That's oh, such a classic. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Nice next? contribution. That was beautiful. Do you want to go next? Sure. <clears throat> All right. So one of my very favorite sites, and I used to subscribe Whoa, to dude, them. This is kind of a family podcast. Yeah, it is. After what we talked about with the moose, <laughs> the things that came out of my mouth about right, the moose. Fine. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit of shame right now. <laughs> And the that's not normal. Is you. Yeah. You're not the one who went looking for the moose. That's <laughs> merchandise idea. The judgy peacock. <laughs> I like it. That's fantastic because if your daughter draws it just right, like it looks like it's just judging you. That could be on a shirt. Yes. Okay. So Cracked Magazine uh, is no longer around, and they went to an internet platform, and one of their one of their uh, shticks is lists, and they use a lot of uh, user submitted. Things they'll ask a question, and you can actually make money by submitting these things to them. You'll win prizes. Uh, you can write for them. Anyway, I really love their stuff. This one is 20 True Crimes That Seem Impossible" by Cracked Writers uh, Ryan Menez Menezes Menezes whatever Menzies, uh, October 25th to 2020. Quincy Green wore an ankle monitor. It put him at home at the time of a murder. But he was the murderer. How did he get there? He just took off his prosthetic leg and replaced it with a backup. That's right. The police had attached to the bracelet to a pro- prosthetic removable leg instead of his real one. That seems like poor planning on their part. Yeah, so really he shouldn't be in trouble for the murder he committed because they're the ones that screwed it up. <laughs> He's got to get out of jail free card. I'm yep. <laughs> uh, let's see. Vasilis Paleoc. Or Paleocus, uh, oh wow, stole a tank. He used it to break his brother out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> this, capped, this capped off a grand criminal career that started with blockading the police station so he could rob a jewelry store while the police failed to escape their own building. <laughs> Some of these people are awesome. So these are just really short snippets, and I, lo- I love these. James Washington was about to die. Nothing to lose, he confessed to murder. Then Washington closed his eyes and didn't die. Instead, he found himself charged, convicted, and slapped with an automatic life sentence for the murder he'd committed 20 years earlier. <laughs> so they were going to put him to death. He confessed. They're like, eh. Is, is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Rye Wardlaw broke into an escape room. He couldn't get out. Apparently, he damaged the back doorknob, then couldn't figure out the lock, which was not controlled by a complicated puzzle, on the front door. (laughs) He called 911, claiming he was calling from his panic room because his house was being robbed. (laughs) I'll just do, like, one or two more. Gerald, Missouri. Wait a minute. I don't understand what it's... Anyway, Gerald, Missouri, had a meth problem. Then Bill Jacob came to town. He said he'd clean things up and didn't bother with warrants or regular procedure. That's because Jacob wasn't a cop at all, just a borderline delusional loser from Illinois. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, last one. I think five is good. Jacques Mesrin escaped prison. Then he came back to free all his friends. <laughs> I promise! <laughs> I, I pro- promise! Like, dude, we can just give here. up, dude! Like, if you got out, f*** those guys! I think they understand, too. <laughs> Any of them right. get out, you're on your own. It's not- yeah. No one's coming back. Dude, you came back and exploited the one way out that we had. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, let's see. He was finally captured, but this time they couldn't even hold on to him long enough to sentence him. He escaped from the courtroom during trial <laughs> by smuggling a gun into court and holding the judge hostage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I have to read one more because this one has a moose face on it. And yes. it kind of goes. Yes. yes. Agnes Westland was bludgeoned to death. Police arrested her husband. Then, forensic analysis came back. She had the hair and saliva of a moose on her. (laughs) Poor Agnes had been randomly kicked to death by a moose. (laughs) 
a drunk moose. The local gardens, <laughs> the local gardens were strewn with fermented apples. <laughs> That's how the gypsy said I was going to go. Yeah, I bet, I bet. <laughs> Kicked to death by a drunk movie. Yeah. What a way to go. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. No, I'm kidding. I'm happy to be alive. Well, so. are we, though? Oh, we're, we're sweating all of us pretty bad. Yeah. So I'm going to go then, um, and I'm going to take our humor to a sophisticated level. Oh, thank you, finally. And we're going to talk about... 17 nurses who reveal the worst things people got stuck in their penises, vaginas, and butts. This is this is good. This is news. Yes. Harkening back to the days of when we were teenagers and we'd print these things off the internet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so um, I was just telling my wife about it. We were going to bed one day. Uh, when we got the internet, that was like the first thing we did was look at <laughs> crap like this. And I remember our friend JT printing out a list and bringing it to a our friend Riley's garage, and we were just sitting there laughing about this very thing. Nice. So she quickly found a BuzzFeed article, so I have to credit Megan for this. Okay. Uh, this is from BuzzFeed. And Thank it you, is Megan. 17 nurses uh, reveal the worst thing that people got stuck up their orifices. <laughs> Paraphrasing. Uh, number one, a Barbie doll's arm. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> the craziest thing was when a man came in with a Barbie doll's arm stuck in his urethra. <laughs> oh, why? Uh, Maybe then, he was reaching for like a kidney stone. I'm trying to get something else out of there. I don't know, but uh, I like Barbie how... doesn't have the kung fu grip. You need a GI Joe arm. <laughs> In parentheses, Buzzfeed clarified that's the pee hole. <laughs> <laughs> for you dum dums out there. Apparently, he ordered a sex doll off eBay, and when it arrived, it was actually a Barbie doll. He was so angry that he ripped off the doll's arms and shoved it up his penis. I mean, that's what you do when you're mad, right? I do, road rage? Oh, my God. I just, it. I grab that doll from my son, rip its arm <laughs> off, shove it in my pee hole. Uh, here's another one. Uh, a potato. <laughs> my step-grandma was a gynecologist. She once had an older woman come in, and at one point, they took x-rays. Apparently, the woman had a potato growing in her uterus. Inside of her uterus. <laughs> like, growing? Yeah. It has those little eyes sprouts, on it? Sprouts, yeah. She lived in a small apartment. She didn't have any gardening area. <laughs> you guys are rude. <laughs> Uh, this one's funny. A guy tried to make a butt plug out of Lego and duct tape. <laughs> oh! And got it stuck in his ass. I wish I was kidding, says this nurse. <laughs> Have you ever stepped on a Lego? Yeah, Why yes. would you put that in your butt? <laughs> uh, here's another one. My mom always remembers the guy who put a light bulb up his ass. I asked her how they got it out, and her response was, with great difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> just shatter it. <laughs> oh. oh! I'm just going to say one thing, and you guys may not know what it is, but one man, one jar. Leaving it at that. I don't know what that is, but you're going to have to tell me. It's on the dark web, I'm sure. Oh, jeez. <laughs> one of those things we should not look up, right? <laughs> right. Please don't, ever. Especially at work. It was, it was no, one of the most traumatic computer. things I've ever seen. You need to look it up at work. <laughs> Tell then, us how that goes. And then you'll have lots of free time. <laughs> you can come hang out with me. Sweet. Uh, here's another one. One night a man came in with the biggest black dildo I've ever seen shoved in his butt. We actually had to follow him around while holding a bucket under his ass. When it was finally removed, his partner asked us to clean it off and said, we're going to need that back. And then she winked at me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> And finally, this is the last one I'll read, um, if you are still with us and haven't puked yet. <laughs> a man came into the ER, blue in the face, looking like he was about to die. They checked all over his body, but couldn't figure out what was wrong. They flipped him over and saw a tail coming out of his butthole. Oh, no. After doing uh. a CT scan, they found a rat inside his rectum. The rat oh. bit off part of his colon, and the man was suffering from internal bleeding, which is why his face turned blue. Oh. Apparently, the man decided to place a condom over the live rat to suffocate it, and then place it up his butt so its breathing would hit his prostate, and he would feel pleasure. The man made a full <laughs> recovery, but the poor rat died. Oh, Templeton, no! <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. Yeah. Why, twisted, twisted why do people. people exist? Why do these people exist? Yeah, it's... Uh, We've hit a real low today, you guys. This is the worst podcast we've ever done. I feel kind of proud, but a little ashamed at the same time. Yeah. I'm, but we can always just say, it was the heat. Yeah, it's the heat. This is built an excuse. Heat stroke. Yeah. So. Your mom's going to be so mad. <laughs> She's never going to listen to this. I know, but she might get pulled. Hi, Mom. I might tell her. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna turn it on and blast it outside her house so she hears you. <laughs> <laughs> or hold up the... The stereo, like in that, in that 80s one, movie. Yeah. What is love? <laughs> hurt me. 
Um, and you've all heard me sing now. Congratulations. Uh, I think I'll read one more just to kind Do of it. cleanse our palate of the rat story. Um, so I once had a guy come in with a shower head up his butt. He had mm. the whole hose trailing behind him like a tail as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So there you guys go. How did he go? Okay. Science. I'd like to hear some of these excuses. <laughs> I slipped in the shower and fell on the shower head. <laughs> it's like that episode of The Simpsons where uh, I think Bart got hurt, so Lisa took him to the Dr. Nick clinic where like everybody went because they had some kind of shame about. And Smithers is standing in line. He's, like, standing straight up with his legs together real tight. And she's like, Mr. Smithers, can I cut in line? My brother's really hurt. He's like, uh, no, I need to get this taken care of right now. <laughs> oh, so. Templeton. <laughs> Zach's not going to be able to sleep tonight. No. I loved Templeton in, in Charlotte's Web. 